Hello, my dear students. Welcome to this new class. And we are the second day of this online class. And in the last class, I hope you remember, we learned what are the causes of poverty in India. And we said the main cause of poverty was the wrong administrative policies of the British government. And then again we said the re another reason for this uh, poverty was the per capita income was very low. At the same time the birth rate was very high. So more people and less income. That also increased the number of poor people in our country. Now let us proceed again <coughs> with uh, uh, more knowledge, more ideas about this and causes of poverty. And see the page number one, sorry, three eight thirty eight. <coughs> and we know most of the people in India they are surviving with agriculture and for agriculture the Indians completely depend on the monsoon we know the monsoon is not regular in India at all sometimes it is very early sometimes it is very late sometimes it is very less sometimes it is in plenty so it can affect the farming of the country. If, the, if it is early, then farmers may not be prepared. If it is late, then the harvest will be late. Or if it is less, then there will be drought. Or if it is too much rain, then there will be flood. So whatever may be, the uh, if effect may be very adverse on the farmers and therefore the irrigation became very necessary the irrigation became very necessary in order to carry out the farming because the we said the population is increasing and uh, people are poor so the main reason for the poverty is that there is not enough food for the people to eat so government realized that we need to introduce some better method or different method in order to <coughs> produce enough agriculture crops in order to produce more grain to satisfy the hunger of the people and therefore the government provided uh, irrigation supplied water for agriculture and we call it the green revolution I hope you remember in the previous classes also we had explained what is green revolution so government used this modern methods or modern technologies in order to improve the agriculture product and that is called green revolution and what are the modern methods government introduced it is they use the irrigation they use better seeds they use the modern technology for plowing and harvesting so they use some machines they began to use fertilizers pesticides so all these things were introduced all these things were used and so it became more convenient for the farmers in order to use these things and it became more and more handy and the agriculture production also increased and when people began to cultivate more because these facilities are provided people began to cultivate more areas and therefore more people got job opportunities before the cultivation was very low because completely depending on monsoon very few farmers were cultivating because they are not sure whether that year monsoon will be there or not or it will be good or not so they were not willing to take the risk now government has provided this irrigation and the other modern facilities 
people began to begin grow in confidence they began to think that this year we are going to have good harvest if you work hard we will get good harvest because certain things are already assured and so more people came forward to begin their agriculture cultivation agriculture work and more people got employment so when more people are employing or working they are getting their wages they are getting their salary that way they will become rich before they were very poor because they are not working they are not getting any money but now the situation is changed they are able to do the work and therefore they are getting the money also so the <coughs> and we know the um, a green revolution it was mainly in punjab haryana and western parts of the pradesh rajasthan and so on so it was not spread throughout the country it was spread only in few corners we can say few states of india and the industries both in the public and the private sector did provide some jobs so as we said the agriculture provided job for some people but it was not spread all over the country therefore people who are living in these four states like rajasthan haryana punjab and uttar pradesh people living in these states they got job in the agriculture field and then government began to introduce industries what type of industries public and private sector we know industries are in different sectors we had also studied earlier also it is in different sectors so the private sector public sector and joint sector and corporate sector but here we are studying about public sector and private sector so public sector means the industries that are owned by the government government is the owner government is doing controlling the management the day to day the day to day affairs and so on that is owned by the government that is private public sector then private sector means just the opposite the government has uh, no control over it it is owned by the private people namely the rich people they can start the industry and give job opportunities to other people to come and work in their factory so they will decide their factory they were the owners of the factory and not the government so government also started industry private people also started industry and some people got job there so they are able to get some income if they work they will get income and the uh, income of the people will go up will become higher and higher but this also not enough to absorb all the job seekers so uh, agriculture sector is a private industry is a public industry is a but still the population of india we said very high and therefore there are more and more people waiting to get job so these few sectors they were not able to satisfy all the people who are seeking for job who are waiting for job so government had to start more and more so unable to find proper job in the cities many people started working as rickshaw pullers vendors construction workers domestic servants etc so people who did not get job in the cities what did they do they began to do some other work so some people began to do Uh, rickshaw pullers you know what is rickshaw cycle rickshaw so they began to uh, drive the rickshaw to carry the passengers from one place to another some people began to uh, work as a vendors vendor means uh, sellers people who are selling things vegetables and other small small things you might have seen people who are selling sitting in the road side and selling things they are called vendors then some people began to work as a construction workers as the laborers people who are building houses and other buildings so these people were hired by them to work there so actually they are looking for other job but they did not get those jobs so whatever is available they are ready to do then some people became domestic servants 
to help in others house or in others uh, factory and so on so most, mostly domestic workers means working in others house so people began to do different different works that way they will get some money and their financial situation will improve then with this irregular and small incomes these people could not afford expensive housing they started living in slums on the outskirts of the cities and the problems of poverty largely a rural phenomenon also became the feature of the urban sector so normally we find the poor people are living in the village they are normally found in the village but these people who did not get job in the cities and they began to do other jobs like uh, rickshaw pullers uh, roadside vendors construction workers domestic servants and so on so they are not going to get big amount of profit or big amount of wages for their work they'll be getting very little profit so with that little money they cannot go and live very comfortable life they cannot hire or rent a big house and live there comfortably so they will be getting very little money after their food and other expenses very little may be left out and with that little money they cannot take a rent house so what they do they go and make a house in the slum area make a small house and they live there so all these poor people who are doing this small jobs who have got very little income they all will be doing this same way they will be coming and staying in this uh, in the slum areas so so many people who are with very little income come and stay in the slums and that also become an area of poor people so that is how in the urban area also we find lot of poor people so people who are in the village people who have no income people who have no work they will be poor but people who are in the town but they do these small jobs with less income they also become very poor they cannot afford to live a very a normal life so they are also very poor that is how we find poor people in the urban sector also in the village normally we find the people in the village are very poor but we think that people who are living in the city they are rich but that is not true these poor workers these people who don't have enough money they all completely uh, depend on their daily income and they cannot live a very good life they are also very poor and then another feature about this high poverty rate has been the huge income inequalities so another reason or another speciality of this poverty is there is income inequalities so the income of the people are not equal it is unequal so one of the major reasons for this is unequal distribution of land and other resources so we know the land of the people or land of the country it is not equally divided for all the people who has got the uh, large number of or large area of land poor people or rich people you will certainly say it is a, a rich people and these rich people are they going to work in the field as a farmer certainly not they are very rich they don't need to work in the farm they can do some other business or do can do office job and so on so these people who are very rich they have got plenty of land but at the same time they have no interest to work in the land what do they do they will distribute the land little by little to different different people so they will work in their land and give certain amount to this land owner so the poor people they like to work in the land but they don't have land they have to hire the land from others that's why we say the land is unequally distributed suppose everyone is given equal amount of land then everyone can do the work in the field and everybody can get income otherwise these poor people will be working in others land 
and they work hard but all the profit all the income they cannot take a large amount a big amount they had to give to the land owner that way the, though these farmers are working but they continue to remain poor then despite many policies we have not been able to tackle the issue in a meaningful manner and major policy initiatives like land reforms which aimed at redistribution of assets in rural areas have not been implemented properly and effectively by most of the state governments so as we said the problem is the land is not equally distributed and the government is also aware about that situation that the land in this country are not equally distributed they are very much aware about it and what is the problem is that the governments are not willing to implement they have taken different resolutions that we will distribute the land we will redistribute making uh, everybody able to get the land and so on but we see the governments are not willing to implement the governments are not willing to implement it that is a problem so they are just pending many state governments are pending their decision they are not courageous enough to take the land from the rich people and distribute to the poor people because they want please the rich people so many of the governments they are doing that that's why the poor people still do not have land for cultivation so the since the lack of land resources has been one of the major causes of poverty in india proper implementation of policy could have improved the life for the millions of rural poor so most of the farmers they don't have land they have to work in others land suppose the government had implemented the policy of land redistribution and give to uh, everyone equally then these most of these poor people in the rural area they have become rich by now they would have worked very hard in their land they could have produced good grain harvest and the country's production would have increased and these poor people also would have become rich but the governments have not shown much interest and therefore they are really lagging behind what to do that is a situation that's why the poor people are still continuing to remain in the in a large way in a huge way in our country still then there are also some socio cultural and economic factors there are some socio cultural and economic factors that are also responsible for creating poverty or increasing poverty in our country let us see in order to fulfill social obligations and observe religious ceremonies people in india including very poor spend a lot of money so that is one of the weakness of the indian people when there is a cultural program or when there is a religious program they are ready to spend a lot of money they are very poor they don't have enough money for their food and other facilities but when a festival comes they are ready to spend any amount somehow they will collect they may sell their property they may borrow from somebody so somehow they will collect all the income that they have and they will spend for that so every year these religious festivals are there other cultural uh, festivals are there and these poor people spend a lot of money that's why they are not able to improve and people in india including very poor very poor people also they want to celebrate nicely they want they are ready to spend a lot of money that they have and so on and small farmers need money to buy agricultural inputs like seeds fertilizers pesticides etc 
so the farmers they need something special in order to improve their production they need fertilizers they need pesticides and they need good seeds and so on so they spend all their money for these festivals and when the harvest season begin they have no money to buy seeds to buy pesticides or fertilizers and so on so what do they do they have to go and borrow money from others so they become debtors so the money that they had in their own hand they spend away for celebration without thinking without proper planning about the needs of the future and when the real time comes they are really struggling they become beggars like they have to go and stand near the rich people's house and ask for loan and agree to pay very high interest and so on so they become uh, beggars we can say because of their lack of planning because of their lack of uh, we can say they are not very intelligent they are not very good for planning and because of that they are really suffering so that is we can say in a way they are foolish because they keep on making this mistake every year they don't learn from their mistakes they as soon as the religious festival comes they simply close their eyes they think about only enjoyment they forget about their future needs that is a, a real and bad thing from our poor people they never think about improving and so when they borrow money from others what happens they have to uh, they have to agree to pay a certain amount of interest and when we borrow money from the private lenders like the interest rate is very high if you borrow from bank it is less but very difficult to get loan from the bank we need to provide lot of documents so to go and borrow money from this money lenders it is very easy you know to pay more money interest so they agree to pay interest and at the end of the harvest they are unable to pay that pay back that money because the amount has become very high because of this high interest and so what happens <coughs> they will say i will come and work in your field next year without payment so they become like the slaves we can say they are never never able to come out of that poor situation they go on borrowing borrowing and they become like slaves they are never able to uh, have any saving for themselves so that is because of their lack of planning so we need to educate these people we need to encourage these people to have their own saving according to the income only they should spend if they have a 20 rupees income and they spend all the 20 rupees then all the other needs will not be met so if they have 20 rupees income they may be able to spend 2 rupees for the festival the rest they should keep for their family need for the agriculture need and then slowly slowly year by year they will be able to improve so they need to have that proper planning but unfortunately our poor farmers maybe due to their lack of education they are not able to improve the situation and they go on making this same mistake again and again and they suffer so we hope that the farmers will be able to come out of this ignorance they'll be able to plan out their future and able to stand on their own leg that is what we need to increase then once that is done suddenly the poverty ratio also will be coming down more and more people will become self reliant they will be able to depend on themselves not on others so let us wind up for today and let us see again in the next class what are the measures that government is taking again in order to fight against this poverty in order to defeat this poverty let us see them all in the next class so thank you for listening have a nice day bye